Welcome to today's breakfast. My name is Casey Starlong, and look, I'm so glad that you are here for today's breakfast. So some of you guys might be like, what is this? What is she doing? Who is she? Um, so I want to introduce myself to you. My name is Casey Starlong. My husband and I, we are pastors in St. Louis, Missouri. And about a year ago, I just heard from the Lord about really um, praying to God and just releasing his word through social media. And I call it today's breakfast because breakfast is supposed to be the most important meal of the day. If you are watching this broadcast live, you can obviously tell that it is not breakfast time. It's actually late in the evening on a Sunday, but I'm still calling this today's breakfast. This is what God's called me to do. And really for the month of September, the Lord has put on my heart to do a challenge. And we're calling this the Proverbs Challenge, where throughout the month of September, we're going to eat a proverb each day. So God is giving me a word each day through the book of Proverbs just to speak and release to his people. So I'm so grateful that you are joining me for today's segment of today's breakfast here at night. For those of you that normally watch my videos, you can see I'm in my office but let me give you a secret about my office. In my house, we have no uh, we have no ceiling lights. So all of our lights, well, we have one ceiling light in our kitchen, but all of our lights come from lamps and natural light. So that's why it's kind of dim here, but um, hopefully you can see me okay. So even though I'm on tonight, this Sunday night at eight o'clock, I will be back during the week at my regularly scheduled time at 10 o'clock a.m. So you guys, we're going to go ahead and just hop right on in um, with the Proverbs challenge. Again, we're eating a Proverbs each day. That's going to be our our word. That's going to be our meal. That's going to be our nutrition. And we know that the book of Proverbs we talked about in day one yesterday, that the book of Proverbs was written by Solomon, one of the wisest rulers amongst all of the earth. God gave him just the gift of knowledge. And so his book of Proverbs is to give instruction. And yesterday we went through uh, Proverbs chapter one, where it told us that Proverbs is for the simple and it is also for the season. So regardless of how long you've been in church, if you've been in church for 50 years, God bless you. If maybe you're just kind of walking new um, into a relationship with Christ, and I believe the book of Proverbs has some wisdom. It has wisdom for everyone. So today we're going to be talking about the benefits of wisdom. And so we're getting um, our direction today from Proverbs chapter two. And one of the things I really like about Proverbs chapter two, um, right off the bat, uh, between verses three through five, it lets us know the benefits of wisdom. That a lot of times we hear people say, okay, well, you need to get wisdom. You need to be wise. You need to, you need to get this. And so Proverbs chapter two, it's letting us know um, what we gain by getting wisdom. What is, what does it really mean to get wisdom? And I really believe that in this season of your life, there's some instruction that God wants to give you. Um, there's a path, there's a strategy that he wants to lay out before you that's gonna make things easier, that's gonna allow you to advance, that's gonna allow you to receive promotion. But here's the thing about wisdom that's outlined in chapter two. It requires you to be intentional about seeking it. That I believe that there are some secrets, there are some strategies that God reveals to his people, to those of us that are willing to sit before God and to ask him for the counsel, to ask him for the wisdom. So we can look at verse chapter, verse three. We're in chapter two. One of the things it says is to cry out for wisdom, to cry out for wisdom. It says, cry out for insight, ask for understanding, search for them as you would for silver, seek them like hidden treasure. Okay, so this is Solomon. He's telling us, he's like, you know what? There's nothing wrong with asking for wisdom. There's nothing wrong with asking God for insight, asking God for revelation. So maybe you find yourself at a crossroads or maybe you find yourself at a point in life where you're like, I'm not really sure which way to go. There's nothing wrong with stopping and just saying, you know what, God, I need some insight. I need some strategy. 
verse three in chapter two of Proverbs is saying, look, cry out for wisdom, cry out for insight. And when you think about crying out, that means like, look, you're stopping and you're saying, hey, God, I need help. And you know what? Sometimes waving that white flag of surrender saying, God, I need help. That requires humility. That requires us being honest with God to saying, you know what, God, I just don't know what to do. I remember when I got married, I got married to Pastor Al over three years ago. I remember talking to my spiritual mother and, um, you know, I was excited about marrying Pastor Al. I knew uh, that he was the, the man of God that God had called for me. I knew that God had called us to be together. But there was a part of me that was afraid. Um, there was a part of me that was fearful because I had never been a wife before. Um, and marrying, you know, Pastor Al, who had three adult children, he had two grandchildren. I'm like, I don't, I don't know how to do this. God, you know, I've been praying to be married, but I really don't know how to be a wife. And I remember my spiritual mother, you know, just giving me some wisdom. And um, I remember being on a prayer line and one of the prayer ladies, uh, she just prayed over me about having the anointing of a wife. And, you know, um, you know, to be a wife, to be a husband, to be a mother, to be a father, there's an anointing that comes with that. And inside of that anointing, there's wisdom that some things God is just uh, giving, giving me the knowledge um, as a wife to to take care of my husband. You know, um, that there are just some things that naturally I just did not know. But spending time in the presence of the Lord, asking him for wisdom. God, give me wisdom. Give me understanding so I can know the heart of my husband. Father, help me to, to just be able to discern his likes, his dislikes, Father. Lord, give me a heart for my husband. Give me wisdom. Give me knowledge so I can serve him, so I can serve him. We know as wives, our calls, our call is to be a help me. But we need wisdom in that role. And so the scripture for today, um, we're looking at Proverbs chapter two between verses three through five. It's letting us know the benefits of wisdom. And it's saying, first of all, that you need to cry out for wisdom, cry out for insight. And then it goes on to say, ask for understanding. This is Solomon. He's telling us as believers that we can ask God for understanding. Maybe you find yourself in a situation and you just are not understanding what is going on. I remember earlier this summer, um, my husband and I, we, we closed the doors to our church. And, you know, this is, we felt like this is what God was calling us to do, but it really didn't make sense. You know, it really didn't make sense. And, you know, some people are like, well, you can't question God. You know, you just do what God tells you to do. But no, I felt led by the Lord to say, God, I need to get understanding what's going on in the season. God, what are you trying to do? What are you trying to teach us? God, what are you speaking? What are you saying? So the Lord is saying, look, you can cry out for wisdom and then you can ask for understanding. We know in James chapter one, verse five, it says, look, ask God for wisdom and he will give it to you generously, right? He'll give it to you generously without reproach. You know, he won't make fun of you for asking for wisdom. He won't make fun of you for asking for advice, for asking for understanding. God gives it generously. But one of the things that I like about chapter two of Proverbs, it's saying that there's some action that's going to be required of you, that there's going to be some sitting down and sitting in the presence of God, getting quiet. You know, the first one, it talks about crying out for wisdom. And then it says, ask for understanding. So that requires just some settling down and getting in the presence of the Lord to be able to ask and also being able to hear. And then the scripture goes on to say, search, search for them. So we're talking about insight and understanding. God is saying, look, search for wisdom, just as you would for silver. Search for it. Be intentional about getting in the presence of God. So throughout the month of September, we are being intentional. We are intentionally going through the book of Proverbs to receive wisdom. You know, that there are some points in my life um, back when I was involved in politics where I didn't have wisdom. I had talent. I had opportunity. But there were some parts that I look back over my life and I just, you know, I shudder because I'm like, oh, you know, I just didn't handle that opportunity the, the best way because I didn't have wisdom. But now as I see God beginning to open up doors and I see God beginning to do new things in my life. 
um, wisdom has taught me to sit before the Lord and say, okay, God, I see that you're opening up this door. God, I see that you're moving this way. Now give me wisdom so that I may be able to walk through the door and be able to stay through the open door. And um, earlier this year, I really felt the Lord speak about this year being the year of open door and uh, being the year of the open door where God will open up doors and grant new opportunities and provide new connections. I also, when I released the word of the Lord um, at our prayer breakfast earlier this year, I said that God is going to give you wisdom and instruction for the open door, because God doesn't want you to just go through the door and not be able to be sustained in that new opportunity. So God isn't promoting you and then you don't have the wisdom to be able to stay in that place, but God is opening up doors and he's also giving you wisdom so that you can walk through those doors. But look, just like the scripture is saying, you need to cry out for wisdom. If you know God is bringing elevation into your life, you've been praying for marriage, you've been praying for new business opportunities, you see God opening up doors for you in your ministry, you see God doing some things in your spouse, you see God doing things with your finances, with your family, you need to be crying out to God, God, give me wisdom, give me understanding. What are you doing in this season? I see that you're moving. I see that you're moving, but God, I need to make sure that I understand exactly what's going on. God, give me the gift of wisdom. Ask God for understanding. And then it says, search for it. Search for it like you would silver. Regard wisdom, regard insight, regard knowledge, regard the revelation of God. Search for it and, and look at it as if it's valuable like wisdom, like uh, silver. So like in our modern day currency, we probably don't think of, you know, silver as being that big of a deal, but um, search for it as if, you know, there were a million dollars out there. You know, basically what this scripture is saying, you know, is that you're going to have to be intentional about it. You're going to have to take the time to get in the presence of God, to hear his voice, to ask him and then be able to hear what God is saying. It says, seek them. We're talking about insight and understanding, or you can say seek wisdom like a hidden treasure. And then one of the things that the scripture, it talks about, it says that when we seek for wisdom, you know, we know that God's going to give it to us. We're talking about the benefits of wisdom today, that when we ask God for wisdom, we know that he will give us the wisdom. And it talks about some of the benefits of wisdom. It says that wisdom will keep you safe. We learned yesterday in Proverbs chapter one, verse 33, it says that um, when we have wisdom, it keeps us at peace and it keeps us away from our enemies. All right. Um, verse 11 in Proverbs chapter two, it says that wisdom will keep you safe. Wisdom will save you from evil people and wisdom, it saves you from the immoral woman. So in the book of uh, Proverbs chapter two, Solomon, he uses kind of like the analogy of a promiscuous woman. And so we can think of that analogy as being um, like sin, that wisdom will keep you from sin. Wisdom will, will keep you from hell. Wisdom will keep you from death and destruction. And so there are benefits to seeking out wisdom, asking God for guidance. Um, and really that guidance and that wisdom will keep you on the straight and narrow path path for peace, for protection, for justice, for blessings, for abundance. And so that's why, you know, seeking wisdom is really important. And I think sometimes as Christians, we might find ourselves getting a little lazy. Well, I pray, I go to church. So I just believe that, you know, wisdom is just going to just drop on me. And that's all that I need. But I believe that there is a deeper place that there are some strategies that God wants to just tell you. So you don't have to waste your time. Um, you don't have to waste your time uh, going this way or that way. But there are just some things that God wants to tell you um, to really accelerate you in your walk with him. If you are willing to what? Cry out for wisdom, to ask God for understanding, to search for wisdom as if it were silver, right? And to, you know, treat wisdom like it's a valuable hidden treasure, treat it, regard it, look upon it as it is very, very valuable. So you guys, we're talking about the benefits of wisdom and uh, chapter two, we're in chapter two, we're on day number two. And um, this basically is telling us that, look, when we have wisdom, 
uh, it protects us. It keeps us safe. It keeps us from harm and danger. It keeps us free from sin. And so what I really believe that God is saying, you know what, if you need wisdom, cry out for it. If you need wisdom, search for it. Seek, seek God for it. You know that there are some things that God wants to tell you. There's some things that he wants to put on your heart, but don't be lazy. Don't be lazy. Don't be lazy. Ask God for it. Well, you guys, I'm going to go ahead and close out for tonight, but I am going to be back tomorrow for tomorrow's breakfast. We'll be here at 10 o'clock. So I'll be here at 10 o'clock um, every day during the week. And on weekends, I am going to do the breakfasts, but the times might be a, a little bit kind of crazy. But uh, Monday through Friday, I definitely will be here at 10 o'clock in the morning. So you guys, I pray that even um, with our breakfast tonight, that this has blessed you in some capacity, that you will have the desire to ask God for revelation. You'll have the desire to ask God for insight, to ask him for wisdom, and that you will really see the value and benefit of being a wise woman, being a wise man of God. I want to remind you that later this month on September the 27th, um, we are going to be kicking off our first online Bible study. So every month, um, every month, the last Tuesday, the last Thursday of the month, we'll have an online Bible study. And this month, our topic is going to be called Why Her? And we're going to be digging up the roots of jealousy, comparison, and competition. So this online Bible study, it's free. It's open to everyone. Um, and I'll be broadcasting right here from Facebook. And of course, if you ever miss any of these broadcasts, I want to encourage you to subscribe to our YouTube page um, where I always uh, post uh, the replays on our YouTube page. And so you can always watch all of our archive messages on our YouTube page. I also want to encourage you that if God touches your heart, will you please consider becoming a financial inspired overflow partner? In addition to doing these daily broadcasts, um, we also host a Christian talk show called the Inspired Overflow Radio Show that is heard throughout the country, that's heard throughout the world. And um, really, God has just given um, me this ministry to just share the gospel through media, to share the gospel through radio, through TV, just whatever forms of media. And so I'm asking you to pray about becoming a partner with this ministry. And what that means is, is that you will commit to praying for the ministry, that God will open up doors and that lives will be changed through the messages that are shared through the radio and through the internet. And that you will also consider sowing a monthly financial seed. That seed can be any amount, whether it's $5, whether it's 20, whether it's $500 a month, but that you will become a partner with this ministry um, so that God's word can go forth and that many people, um, their lives can be set free by just us teaching and sharing the word of God. All right, you guys, well, I pray that you guys have a great night. I will be back tomorrow at 10 o'clock for tomorrow's breakfast. Until then, I hope you guys have a great night.